This is Sergei. He is a breed of cat known as an archangel. He is the male half of the only breeding pair of archangels outside of Russia. Sergei is worth $4,000 and is owned by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Mylon Greer. My name is Mylon Greer. My name is Mylon Greer. Only one of these men is the real Mylon Greer. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. to tell the truth. Brought to you this week by Wizard Room Deodorizer. The deodorizer with the odor killing ingredients that trap household odors and just simply clear them away. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bud. Well, that's what I like. A bright, smart, on top of everything <laughs> reply. Orson, you're really getting on top of everything. You're starting a school or something, aren't you? I'm starting what? a, uh, of all things, I'm starting a, a grade school for kids here in Manhattan based on the English school Summerhill. And I'm very excited oh, about it. Wonderful. It's a school where you don't have to go to class and you can smoke and drink and... Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm, so I'm exaggerating a little. But I am starting a Summerhill school. Well, good fortune with it. All right, open up that first envelope, if you will, please, panel, and follow along as I read this opening story. I, Mylon Greer, own and operate the only shop in the world that sells nothing but pedigreed cats. My cats range in price from $75 for a Siamese to $1,000 for an Archangel kitten. I will not sell a cat to a person who has the wrong kind of personality. A potential owner must realize that all cats are individuals. They make no pretense at affection, they have no sense of humor, they like to be treated rough, and their so-called cute antics are all completely premeditated. In terms of popularity, cats are on the upswing. They now outnumber dogs in this country by more than 700,000. In my opinion, the dog, as a pet, is passé. Signed, Mylon Greer. <laughs> Panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen are claiming that they're in on a millennium of some sort, claiming to be Mylon Greer, a cat expert, who says that the, the uh, cat is the new thing and dogs are passe. Let's start questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, number two, uh, uh, how did you get this cat out of Russia? Did he have to break through the Iron Curtain, or... These are the only two breeding cats outside of Russia, you said. Uh, yes, that's correct, sir. How does and that happen, that there are so few? Well, uh, it's a new variety, of course, and uh, is rare. And because it's rare, it's difficult to acquire. And I it see. took a bit of finagling to get it out of Russia, as a matter of fact. Number one, uh, uh... At one time, uh, one-fourth of all the people in Germany were burned at the stake for owning cats. Do you know this, and can you account for this phenomenon? This is years ago. <laughs> I don't know anything about, about it, that? no, I'm sorry. Number three, do you know about that? No. Number three, where is the Bidewee home for cats? It's here in New York. I don't know the address. Number one, do you? Yes. Kitty. Uh, between... Ah, uh, uh, number two, where is Archangel? In northern Russia. Uh, number three, what distinguishes a Manx? It doesn't have a tail. Uh, number one, what distinguishes an Angora? Angora is the name for the kind of fur. Number two, what distinguishes a Persian? The lard, the fluffy fur. Thank you. Number three, is this uh, archangel kitten very rough? I don't know what you mean by rough. Well, you say cats are rough. They like to be treated rough. Is this one a rough cat? Do you like to be treated rough? Yes, all cats like to be treated roughly. In what way? Oh. Hit them? <laughs> Tom Poston. Uh, thank you. Uh, th <laughs> number three, what is dander? I don't know. Do you know number two, dander? No, sir, I don't recognize the term. Number one, what is dander? I'm sorry, I don't know. Well, you've got my dander up now. <laughs> uh, uh, number three, what is a, a North American short hair? Is I that, don't know. Is that a pedigreed cat? He's an Ivy League boy. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think it's a, a pedigree no, cat. Num number two, how many uh, pedigrees are there for cats? 
Well, as many as there are pedigreed cats, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, how many types of cats are, are, are classified as pedigreed cats? Well, how many any, types are there in the... Uh... Any cat whose lineage is known is a pedigreed cat. In other words, the pedigree is a, a record of the lineage of the, of, the, of the progenitors, if you please. A peggy cat? A cat? Oh, <laughs> uh, Number three, where is the Empire Cat Show held? Here in New York. Uh, number two, could you tell me which building it's held in? I think it's the 34th Street Armory. Um, number one, what is a Burmese? A Burmese cat? A yeah. Burmese cat is a long-haired Siamese, actually. Uh, number two, what is a calico cat? Well, it's one that has its three colors. Uh, number three is a, a sort of a differential in the sex ratio of those cats. There are more boys or more girls. Do you know which it is in calico cats? I think there are, there are more um, females. Uh, no, uh, number That's all the time we have. That's an interesting note to leave it on, but let's, shall we, and get to the business of marking our ballot. Please mark them, panel, at once, without change. No consultation, of course, permitted as you vote now, if you will, for number one number two, or number three. Of course, our team of challengers will be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All voting <laughs> ended, is it? Peachy, she's made a terrible mess she over here. She has, eh? Well, we'll have her stay, can't for, even from here. stay for penmanship after that. <laughs> Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wrote down number one, but I didn't mean it. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. All right, Peggy. <laughs> well, I voted for number two, because if you own a lot of pedigree cats, you ought to know about that high-class cat show, and it's a, it is a 34th Street Armory, and also of calico cats. Maybe they're not pedigree, but they're rare, and 90% of them are female. Uh-huh. And they're smart. <laughs> <laughs> and you're smug. <laughs> Orson. Yes, number two looks like a cat man to me. I'm a cat man. I've always owned cats, and I've never been troubled with hairballs, friends. I eat grass. Number two... <laughs> It's my choice. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> oh, Kitty Carlisle. Well, I was going to vote for number two, but as you can see, I did make a bit of a mess, and I voted for number three. Um, number three I voted for because I did think there were more female cats in the calico breed, and number three said there were more females. Um, and I love cats, too, and I voted for number three. Well, that's an unusually uh, <laughs> split vote, the way you have it tonight. You don't usually do it quite that way. However, let's see what comes out of the of the melange here as we go into the truth circle and find out how many of you are right and how many wrong. Oh. Learning now, which of these gentlemen actually is the expert on cats and uh, has written about it to prove it, as a matter of fact. Will the real Mylon Greer please stand up? Thank you, sir, very much. Not only does uh, Mylon Greer believe that dogs are really passe, but he's written a book to prove it, which he calls The Fabulous Feline, or Dogs Are Passe, which is used, I'm told, as a textbook in two universities. Well, really? he's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, huh? universities or not, he's wrong. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Damian London, and I'm a comedy writer. <laughs> And number two, you got the greatest amount of votes. What is your name and what do you do, sir? Oh, I'm G. Beverly Salmons, uh, headmaster of Tamworth Academy in Wanalancet, New Hampshire. And... <laughs> right. At my school, there are no such liberties as were mentioned, <laughs> if you please. <laughs> well, you kids will come to my school, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, in checking the score, it's a very happy one for you. You did an excellent job of fooling a very astute panel. And there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each. That, of course, means coming your way from Dristan is $750, as well as the gift package of all the fine products. And the makers of Dristan, gentlemen, thank you very much for enlivening our evening. It was, in the vernacular, the cat. Good night, and God bless you. And now, here's a difference you probably never thought about. Do you know the difference between an air freshener and a genuine room deodorizer like new Wizard room deodorizer? Wizard has unique odor-killing ingredients. It kills household odors as only a genuine deodorizer can do. An air freshener merely hides bad odors under perfume.
New Wizard has unique odor-killing ingredients to trap household odors and clear them away. Check the labels of leading brands. Don't settle for just an air freshener. Get a genuine deodorizer. New Wizard kills household odors. There are seven light, delightful wizards, all of them now at a new low price. So don't just hide bad odors under perfume. Remember, New Wizard traps household odors and clears them away. Check the labels of leading brands. Don't settle for just an air freshener. Get a genuine deodorizer. New Wizard kills household odors. And here, panel, is our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Redding. My name is Jerry Redding. My name is Jerry Redding. Panel, will you follow along with your copies of this story? I, Jerry Redding, am a cosmetologist. Through chemical research, I have discovered that the best treatment for the hair and skin is the application of common kitchen ingredients. For instance, a combination of raw egg whites and herb tea is good for wrinkles. Chapped skin responds to a solution of cider vinegar and water. For a wave set, I suggest the use of skimmed milk. Wheat germ oil is good for hair that is exhausted. And mayonnaise works wonders on hair that is just plain sick. In those extreme cases, when hair is actually dying, the most effective remedy is an application of vodka and red pepper. Sign, <laughs> Jerry Redding. <laughs> Panel, these three persons all claim to be Jerry Redding. Kitchen cosmetologist, I guess you could call it. Let's start the cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, a uh, bud. I, I have to disqualify myself. Oh. Well, I know all of these kitchen cosmetologists so well. You've actually put this stuff on your head? No, no, <laughs> but uh, I, I know the person, so I won't, uh, I'll disqualify myself. All right, Tom. Oh. All right, that brings us to Peggy then. Peggy, will you start us off? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number three, where do you, how do you put the mayonnaise in your hair? And don't you smell terrible? Oh, no. <laughs> well, what do you do, comb it through so that you look yellow? Oh, no. Well, what do you do, number three, dear? Uh, just take a little on your hands and put it through your hair, just like any lubrication, uh -huh. any kind of... And, uh, and number one, the vodka and red pepper, could you tell me those proportions? Because my hair is actually dying. <laughs> 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 what are the proportions of vodka and red pepper? To a pint of vodka, mm -hmm. you put uh, an ounce jar, which is actually less than an ounce, uh, of cayenne, red pepper. And this has to be shaken up every once in a while and allowed to brew for about two weeks. Then... Uh, is well, that I'll, I'll this information There's later, but if you get in an stop. elevator, wow! Or <laughs> Yes, my friend uh, Barney Weinspar invented a uh, hair tonic. It doesn't uh, actually grow hair. It, it shrinks your head to fit the hair that it already has. <laughs> <laughs> number, uh, number three, uh, what do you do with the raw egg and the herb tea? Do you drink it or do you, uh, do you, do you rub it in or what? Oh, no. Uh, the raw egg and the herb are all mixed up together. I know, and then and what you, do you... Uh... And you make a paste. Oh, you... a paste, a hard little yes, paste. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, number two, uh, what is your definition of sick hair as opposed to dying hair? <laughs> How can you tell if the hair has got a few more years to live or not? <laughs> dying hair, I guess, is hair that falls out, and sick hair is hair that's getting ready to fall out. Well, that's <laughs> right. Number Kitty one, Carlisle. Two, Sir, number two, uh, do you use this p preparation on your own hair? All the time. It's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> number one, would you tell me what castor oil is good for? Castor oil is very good for... I mean, on the outside. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I was, I was right, thinking Kitty. about warts. Castor uh, oil is very good for removing warts and skin blemishes when... Melanin leaves the skin from excessive sun. Thank you very castor much. Oil. Number two, three, um, would you tell me if castor oil can grow eyelashes? Well, I've never used castor oil for yeah. eyelashes. Uh, number two, you when you, do you drink this? It, uh, can, it can raise eyelashes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> raise eyebrows, yes. <laughs> sure oh, yeah. can. All right, let's get to the business of marking balance because the time is up for questioning. So mark them at once, please, without change, no consultation. Just vote, if you will, for number one. Or number two, 
Our number three. All ballots marked? Very well, Tom, we won't ask you because you disqualified yourself and that will go as an incorrect vote in the final uh, totaling up of the score. Uh, Peggy, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Uh, they all look marvelous and their hair is bouncing around just great. But number one said cassowary was good for warts and I read that once in an herb book. No kidding. Yes, yeah. I did. <coughs> so if she knows that it's good for warts, then maybe she's the one. All right, Orson. Yes, I was hoping to hear about the famous cider and vinegar cure for dowager's hump. I didn't hear <laughs> number three. Uh, <laughs> doesn't actually send it away. You just don't mind having it. It's a good thing. Number three kind of, uh, I think, did the, uh, the massage kind of, uh, I didn't look professional to me. And number two, uh, he was kind of vague about uh, the uses of the different things. Number one is my choice. All right, Kitty. I voted for number two for very simple reason. Number one and number three have beautiful hair but can't compare to number one. <laughs> To number one. I mean two. Oh, all right. I mixed up okay. tonight. All right, here we have it. Two for number one, one for number two, and one disqualification which goes as a wrong vote. However, the outcome comes up. Let's see how it does as we learn now which one of these persons actually is the uh, uh, kitchen cosmetologist. The will real Jerry Redding, please stand up. I agree with, with Kitty. You're a good example of your own ministration. I can uh, hardly Tom. wait to go home and put mayonnaise in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, where do you know? Uh, I Jerry? saw this cat put mayonnaise in Steve Allen's hair one night. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it was the funniest thing you've ever seen. And to see Steve's face gradually <laughs> grow, <laughs> grow more and more tense <laughs> as the mayonnaise was going in, wow. it was a beautiful sight. <laughs> and he had to leave it in. He couldn't do anything about it for another hour and a half. <laughs> Walking salad. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Pamela Cathcart and I'm a receptionist for Goodson Todman. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Penny Phillips and I'm the cartoon voice of Quay the Cat. Crazy <laughs> <laughs> Cat. Cartoon voice of Crazy Cat. It's a great cartoon, beautifully done. Crazy I Cat? Uh -huh. Crazy Cat. Oh, in checking the score, we find that there were uh, two incorrect votes plus the one disqualification, which makes it three and three times two hundred and fifty dollars. Seven hundred and fifty dollars, my friends, which you take along with you. And our thanks, of course, that comes your way from Dristan, and they also have for you a gift package of the fine products made for the makers of Dristan. Thanks so much for having fun with us. Hope you did. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> A word of interest about a new nasal spray. For sinus congestion and head colds distress, use Dristan Nasal Mist. Contains the decongestant most prescribed by doctors to bring quick, deep relief. Look, the nasograph shows almost no air coming through this victim's nostrils. Now Dristan Mist sprayed into one nostril. In seconds, it penetrates deep into swollen nasal sinus passages, promotes drainage, thus relieves pressure, controls post-nasal drip, now, nostril sprayed with Tristan shows free breathing restored. Get Tristan Nasal Mist. And now a word about Bicidol. Every time you suffer acid indigestion, remember, excess acid can cause an irritated stomach lining. That's why you need the big relief in medicated Bicidol tablets. Big relief because Bicidol medication not only neutralizes more irritating stomach acid, gram for gram twice as much as other leading antacid tablets, Isidol also coats, soothes stomach lining, helps protect against further acid flare-ups. Bicidol sure gives me big relief. Get medicated Bicidol. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Edward Thorpe. My name is Edward Thorpe. My name is Edward Thorpe. All right, panel, please take out the next copy, if you will, and follow along. I, Edward Thorpe, am an associate professor of mathematics. I am especially interested in the laws of probability in gambling games. I applied some theories of my own and the findings of a computer to the game of blackjack or 21 and came up with a preliminary report which I delivered before a scientific meeting. The results were astonishing. 
300 copies of my report were snapped up by the scientists, and I was besieged by people who wanted to help me profit from my system. Two big-time gamblers actually did back me in an experiment at the blackjack table. In two hours of play, we broke the bank twice and won $17,000. The book I wrote expounding my system is called Beat the Dealer, a winning strategy for the game of 21. It is currently the most requested volume in the Las Vegas Public Library. <laughs> Signed, Edward Thorpe. bring you three gentlemen panel all claiming to be Edward Thorpe, as you heard, author of what is called the most popular book in the Las Vegas Public Library. We'll start with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Uh, number two, who's Scarn? Scarn? Yes. Do you mean Scarny? Well, I don't know how to pronounce it. I read the book, but I'm... He uh, wrote yes. a book about gambling. Uh, number three, uh, in Blackjack, he tells you to stand on a certain number. Do you know what number that is? I'm sorry, I don't know. Do you know number one? Who, who tells you to stand? Scarny. When he t t when the, in his book about blackjack, he says that you, should, you can even stand on as low a number as a certain number. I don't recall. Do you know number two? No, I don't. Oh, what is insurance? Number three, what is insurance in blackjack when you take insurance? Well, that means that if the dealer has an ace, mm -hmm. and you can see the ace, then you can put out a little bet to protect your bet against him having a blackjack. Thank you. Orson. And number two, you broke the bank twice in two hours of play. Were there other times where you tried it and, and failed? There were other times we broke the bank, other times we didn't. Did you lose all your money sometimes? No, never. Number one, how much money would you need to, to go into this? Would you have to have a certain reserve behind you? Well, I started uh, with $10,000 with my two gambling friends. Uh, I only dipped into $1,300. I see. Number, number three, were these uh, gambling friends, are they still uh, walking free in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know them by name? <laughs> I call them uh, X and Y in my book. X and Y. <laughs> Kitty. Well, having done this extraordinary thing, I want to know why you're here. <laughs> why aren't you working? <laughs> number one, um, we had a man on this show once who had a computer for, uh, I think it was Blackjack. Do you know his name? Mm, I think I know who you mean, uh, but I don't believe he used the same type of computer as, as I used. I used a digital computer. I see. Now, how, number two, how long did it take you to work this out? The entire theory? Yeah. Close to a year. Number three, I'm asking this question seriously. Why don't you just do it all the time? I'm not very popular out there these days. Uh, number one, where did you play? Tom Poston. Uh, uh, number one, they wouldn't think of keeping you out of Las Vegas, would they? Oh, they sure would. <laughs> well, what is that? What do you mean? They, they don't want you to, to come to Las Vegas? Gambling is a business. I know, but it's also a, a supposedly a free uh, society. There's nothing free under the sun. If you start winning, you're in trouble. Well, uh, uh, thank you. Number two, number two, what is a bank? What determines a bank? D determines the bank, it's up to the casino. They will have as much or as... And that's it. There we pause on an as, and we stop and go right to the if and but as we please mark our ballot. Set once, please. Without any change, of course, and without any consultation. Just vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? No. Nope. Please mark. We haven't much time. There we go. All right, Tom, for whom? I voted for number three, and I'll tell you, if uh, we better straighten this out right now because uh, I don't think that Vegas or any other place that's a public uh, place like that is allowed to bar people from their halls just because they win. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think it's number three. Peggy. Well, I voted for number two. I don't think that they could keep you out of, say, the Flamingo if you wanted to bet. But, and also number three, insurance is when you have two aces and you double them up and bet it. It's not that other insurance that you said. At least where I played it, that was insurance. Because <laughs> I think it was uh, nice that we had a chance to hear number one's uh, story about how they're after them before they come for them. Uh, number three, because if they weren't after them before, they will be now. Number three is my choice. 
Kitty. Well, I think Peggy and Tom are naive. I'm sure they want to keep them out of Las Vegas, and I voted for number two about that book, and if you made up that book, I'm going to kill you. Book. Oh, good. I voted for number two. Well, it's evenly split. That's more the way you do as a rule. Two for Arnie two, was two for on three. Here, I think. We go now for the truth and find out who's right and who's wrong as we learn which one of these gentlemen actually is the author of the most popular book in the Las Vegas library. Will the real Dr. Edward Thro Thorpe please stand up? Dr. Thorpe. Thank you, sir. Yes, Tom. Well, I wondered if they'd let him in Vegas. They often say, uh, we don't like your action here. Would you please play somewhere else? They keep you But they can't really keep you out, can they? Else. Legally, I mean. No, they can't. Legally. Uh, yeah, I, I believe they can. I think they're classified as private clubs. Oh? They, they can play to whom they want and not play to whom they want. Uh -huh. Well, well I think people ought to know that. I don't have go any more time to go into this any deeper. We're going to it later. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm uh, Bob Kozlarik, and I'm a stockbroker down on Wall Street. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name, and what do you really do? My name is John Gambling. <laughs> John Gambling, as I'm sure I don't have to tell you, wakes up an awful lot of people. About eight million every week is host of his own show on radio station WR here in New York. John, it's nice to have you with us. Very nice. Thank day. you, bud. Thank you. That's right. And just for the record, Dr. Thorpe is Associate Professor of Mathematics at New Mexico State University. Well, it was a lot of fun, and we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each. That's $500 from Dristan, as well as a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thanks so much. It was enlightening. It was fun. It was worth the gamble. Good night. God bless you. Maybe what is this bit about insurance? Uh, well, I always thought that if you got two aces, that you could split them up and make a side bet with the... the well, anyway, I did it wrong once. It was impressed on me. I lost money that way. <laughs> he must know. I don't know. I never well, went I to college. I hope we can clear it up. We certainly have. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, but we had a lot of fun. And boy, the things I find out about you all. Thank you for letting me find it out. Good night to you, Good and night. bless you. And all of you, too. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon the daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. has been brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head cold distress. Dristan Nasal Mist. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program recorded.